it's Dake's Wake, it's Dake's Wake. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Dag Swags. The special guests continue. Today's special guest has won the 2020 Fantasy Sports Writing Association Daily. That's a lot to say right there. Fantasy Writer of the Year and Golf Writer of the Year awards. He's also won the Fantasy Sports Trade Association's Best Sports Betting Analyst Award. His 21 FSWA nominations lead all writers this decade and are third most of all time. Host of the Pat Mayo Experience, a good friend, Pat Mayo. You can find him at the PME. Pat, welcome to my show. How you been, man? I am. I do so many of these guest appearances during Masters Week, and this is the one I look forward to the most. Oh, that's amazing, man. So the, those of you who don't know me and Pat, we went to college together. We really bonded in college. So this is a great pleasure to not only catch up, but to have him on the show, especially as I'm just getting going. Another great guest of mine. Um, we're halfway through the golf season. Let's get to the topic everyone wants to talk about. This week is Masters Week at Augusta. Do you like anyone in particular heading into this round? And if so, why? So at the top of the board, it's really tough. Because you can make your pro list for any of the top 20-ish guys, and it's all going to look really good on paper. That's the reason that they're so high in the odds, so high in the world ranking. So it's going to take a while to kind of parse through everyone. If I'm going with anyone, the only bet that I have in from the very top of the board right now, I have gone with Colin Morikawa, 22 to 1 to win. And he is not in Colin Morikawa type form at the moment. So he's not going to be a very popular bet. So you might even be able to catch better odds later in the week because as sports books work, that the action that they take is going to dictate a lot of the pricing at the top. So if everyone bets John Rahm and he's 10 to 1, well, by Wednesday, he's going to be 8 to 1 just because they know that money is piling in there. Conversely, it works the opposite way. If Morikawa is 22 to 1 right now, no one bets him, he'll be 28 to 1, maybe even 30 to 1, probably not 30. 28 is probably the limit that we're going to see later on in the week. But when you rack your brain and think about the types of players who end up doing really well at Augusta year over year over year, yes, ball striking, driving, it makes a huge difference. Short game, you're going to not need to be greens. But Morikawa possesses the one skill, which is the most important at the Masters, the reason that Tiger Woods won so many Masters over the years. Desire, the best iron player on the planet. He is the best on approach over the past two years. It's not even really close. It's Morikawa and Justin Thomas. That's it. And then everyone else is a full step down from those two guys. And Morikawa, basically a lot like Justin Thomas, he does not, I mean, Justin Thomas has an excellent short game, Morikawa does not. It occasionally pops up that he chips in a few times and the numbers look good, but by and large, very inconsistent from the green side. However, he hits a ton of greens in regulation, so you have to hope that he doesn't have to rely on that. But the putter is the big difference, that Morikawa, you're going to know basically through 18 holes what it's going to be. He's either going to miss every putt or he's going to be one of the best putters on the course. I don't know really how that works and how it shifts <laughs> week to week for him, but he's in this down spell right now. And every time that he's been in a down spell in his career on the greens and just overall performance, all of a sudden he wins. It happened before the WGC at concession last year. No one wanted to take him. He had just flamed out at Riviera, lost eight strokes putting that week. What does he do? Beats the pants off the best players in the world. The very next week, the putt looks fine. Scottish Open last year, all ports were, oh, he can't play on links. He hates links. He didn't play out. Him at the Open Championship, he was the time, 40 to him. I didn't even bet him for the first time ever. So he goes out and beats He's Jordan your guy too. And Sorry to interrupt. And, and wins. He's won two of the past eight majors performance from him here and i really do believe that if he shows up with his best stuff at augusta he is going to win and you're getting significantly better odds on him than you are on john rom on justin thomas on scotty scheffler on cam smith on dustin johnson he's about on that tier of the same win equity as those guys but you get him for double the odds so in terms of pure value Morikawa would be my play from the top from a little bit farther down. You can get him at 70 to one right now. I still really like Adam Scott. The putter has been vastly improved over the past 18 months. Obviously he's won at the masters before yeah, that helps. as long as he doesn't drive it like absolute crap this week. 
Uh, the irons and putting have been good enough to get him around. He has that experience at the course, which does go a long way. And he's kind of being slept on at the moment. I like Adam Scott. So you touched on a couple things I was going to ask you about. I was going to ask you about some of the key things you look at, and you kind of touched on the irons and you kind of touched on the putting. Yeah, are those, so those are the two keys. Is there any other sort of things that people should look out for when playing the Masters uh, this week, like key stats you might look at besides those two things? I think that par five scoring is going to be huge. Obviously, there's always a lean towards those who hit the ball farther simply because it makes the par five shorter. And you can get these par fives. You can make eagle on these par fives, although 19 about 21 yards this year and if the wind starts blowing it's a three-shot hole anyway but you maximize your upside with the longers in that regard but overall you just need to drive the ball well you don't need to be bryson you don't have to be john rom or dustin johnson off the tee like the year that patrick reed won was actually like the best driving performance that he's had in the past five years he gained oh, three and a half strokes that. off the tee that year I actually weren't good that year, but he drove it so well, putted so well, and chipped so well, it made up for it. The path of least resistance in terms of key stats are going to be strokes gained approach, probably master's course history. It is the, I don't really subscribe to course history all that much, but it is a legitimate factor at Augusta National, just knowing where to miss, knowing where to hit it off the tee, just having that experience is really key. And then the lead in form, like just trend wise, Hideki blew a lot of this up last year because he didn't fit many of the trends narratives that we saw coming in but so 2011 had at least two top 15 finishes in their previous three starts coming in to the master so whether it was in february or march or even april coming in they were in really good form hideki was in good form statistically the results weren't there were and that's just an easy way to whittle down the list just a little bit Nice. And, and the mental toughness is another thing I want to touch on with you. Like I, you see so many times in golf, especially in the, in the big tournaments, the masters at Augusta, like the pressure can really get to some players. Do you see any of these top players that might crack or do you like any, anybody sort of lower down, like you touched on already at 70 to one, 75 to one odds that might be able to overcome those moments and, and exceed, exceed this weekend going to go with longer odds guys that's why i took adam scott because he's done he's been there before he's done it but the mental toughness stuff and crumbling down the stretch it happens to everyone i mean it didn't really happen to tiger in 2000 but tiger is an outlier in all yes. of this he's he and jack are the best players of all time no one's going to correlate with them but you've seen it from everyone dustin johnson's had leads at majors he's gagged them away brooks kepka who's won four majors he's also been in contention of another 10 on sunday in all with poor play you're just never really going to know even morikawa like morikawa like i mentioned he's won two of the eight majors he's ever played in uh he has the highest winning rate of anyone right now on the pga tour throughout their career uh, i've watched him on sundays absolutely he blew it last year to stuart sink at the heritage when they were going into he lost to a 49 year old man being the best <laughs> player in the world you never really know what circumstances circumstances are going to hit but you have to look at it as a, you only ever really remember when they crumble and then that sticks yep. out in your mind like rory has been the least service person in all of this because the narrative shifted on rory over the past six seven years that he just blows it all the time well is it his fault that he's always in contention like when you're in contention every week you're not going to win every week but then the only thing that sticks out in people's minds are that oh yeah on sunday he didn't play very well well he was inside the top five going into Sunday. Most players just aren't there. So you have no idea what they're up to. Yeah, I like Rory. I've got a, I got a bit of money on Rory to finish, to, well, to win it all and to finish top five as well this weekend. Uh, I just like his consistency in play. And I've got a little bit of a soft spot for Rory. Kind of kind of like how you do with your boy there that, that you you like this weekend. But um, on to Tiger Woods. The most polarizing figure in golf. He draws eyeballs. Even the fact that he might play, and, and I don't think he pulled that press conference and showed up and everything if he wasn't going to play. What are your thoughts on him playing this weekend? Do you think he will? What are realistic ex expectations, if I can talk today, for him this weekend? I think he's going to play. I actually just released my Masters Bet show on the Pat Mayo Experience. I actually had Adam Schefter on from ESPN who almost guaranteed that Tiger was going to play this week. And I don't think that he comes back and plays if he's not right. Cause he's not going to be 
Tiger Woods that we have in our mind, guy that won four majors in a row. But he also hasn't been that guy in 20 years, so that shouldn't be the expectation. But he's not going to come out here and embarrass himself. That's just not going to happen. He wouldn't play if that was the case. He has never missed the cut at the Masters as a professional. He missed it as an amateur back in 1996. That's been it. It's been like 21 consecutive made cuts for Tiger Woods at Augusta, which you can get at plus 120 right now to make the cut. I was just going to ask you. (laughs) I like that bet a lot this week. So I think he makes the cut. A top 10 bet on Tiger wouldn't be the craziest thing. The issue is with Tiger, and it's no different than any other sports. With Ontario launching sports betting right now, any fans of the Toronto Maple Leafs in Ontario are going to find this, that in Ontario, on those books, you're never going to get good odds on the Toronto Maple Leafs or the Raptors for that matter, because people are just inherently going to bet on them. On a national scale, we see it in the NFL. The Cowboys are always overvalued because the Cowboys are the most popular team in football, and they're just going to take action regardless. And you see, well, anything that has LeBron on it are just inherently going to have worse odds because LeBron is on it. They can put the price at whatever they want. Tigers at 40 to 1 in a lot of spots right now. That's unbettable. That's not to say he's not going to win. I don't think he's going to win, but his realistic odds should be like 100 to 1, 150 to 1, if we're being truly honest about it. But they could have made it 10 to 1 and people would have bet it. There's no value at bet. The value that you're going to find cut odds, maybe a head-to-head matchup with Tiger, a top 20, a top 10, something like that. But those outright odds for him to win this week are outrageous. Tiger Woods. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tiger's just so polarizing. I had to at least bring up one Tiger Woods question with you today. Um, The coveted green jacket, you've already touched on. Some of the tricky holes, like you got uh, Amen's corner, the... What else besides all men's corner could affect the final outcome of this tournament? Like what are the other main holes of concern for the golfers that people who might not follow the masters as closely as yourself might want to know about heading into this weekend? King of the turn and playing the second nine holes 10 and 11, basically holes 10 and 11 are really going to dictate a lot of what happens. And then you start getting into corner where you can score on amen corner that's not a problem you can but you really five uh number 13 you hit the alias but they redesigned number 11 very slightly the most difficult course but they got rid of a patch trees down the right hand fairway and it's not behind is your you know sol on that but you want to be playing that ball down the right hand side for the easier shot down that huge down slope but there's the a lot one of the intriguing hole on the course because it can lead triple bogeys come out of nowhere uh and if you can somehow make birdie on that hole it's outrageous but just you're playing for par that's a hold on the we have number 12 really short par three but it's different and it's swirls. So, I mean, Jordan Spieth in 2016 walked in there with a three stroke lead and walked out losing by two shots. Once he, because you can dunk in the water twice if you just don't judge that wind properly. And then you get to Amen Corner. Then you see the birdies and everything else that's going to happen. So, it's just, and number one, number one's a really hard hole. Uh, so, there's a few birdie holes. There's a few, hold on to your seat, just try to grind out a par. Uh, birdie holes on the course where that's where you're going to make them you get lucky to make them anywhere else but you just cannot be making your double bogeys your triple bogeys everyone's going to make a few bogeys that's going to happen no one's going to play flawless golf but you really have to make sure you don't get those crooked numbers on the scorecards on one on 10 on 11 17 18 uh, all very difficult holes now you're you're big into the fantasy side as well. So th- those are my viewers who might be into the fantasy. Uh, is there a different approach you take when making your fantasy bets as opposed to the bets we've discussed already? Hundred percent. So DraftKings for the Masters, obviously it's a different situation. Like you still have to think about it in terms of relative value. So when you're betting someone, the odds dictate what you're going to do. It's not like I'm just picking three guys to win. If that was the case, I'd pick Rom. Dustin Johnson and Morikawa. 
then I wouldn't have to worry about it. But if you try to bet on these guys, their odds are so small, you're going to run out of money if like forever if one of those guys doesn't win. So in daily fantasy, there's the price allocation next to them. You have a salary cap that you have to work with. So while I'm not targeting a lot of long shot, triple digit guys to win outright in the betting market, you need those guys to have a good finish for your fantasy lineup. So your $7,000 on DraftKings or your six pair up top guys. So looking down the road, which of these guys who I don't think is going to win is actually going to perform pretty well regardless. So around that $7,000 range on DraftKings, and these can be like top 20 bets, top 30 bets, top 10 bets this week. Bobby Mack, my guy, Robert McIntyre, his debut at the Masters, big hitting Scottish lefty. Uh, I like him. He's $7,000, my personal favorite. See, woo, Kim. Comes in at 110 to one. I actually did bet that one for him to win because I love Siwoo, but he's made his last four straight Masters cuts was T12 last year, which included a round where he snapped his putter in half and had putt with a five wood the rest of the time. Erratic, and he's not for the faint of heart, but he's a very skilled, high upside player. He's $7,100. Luke List is down there. Has not played in the Masters since 2005. Currently having the best year of his career. He's 180 to one right now, but $7,100 on DraftKings. And another debutant, a first timer. No debutant has won since 1979 in Fuzzy Zeller, but to place well, Will Zalatoris was second last year. Uh, the year before that, Sung JM came in second place as first timer. So just because they're not winning doesn't mean that they're not finishing up the board. Cameron Young would be my guy this year. He bombs it. He's great with his wedges and putts a whole lot better than I think than people would expect for someone who hits the ball that far. Yeah. And, and I guess from what I'm taking from this, it fantasy would be the way to go. If you're thinking of maybe a former champion or, or somebody that's uh, over the age of 40, 45, say, or one of the amateurs, because they don't realistically have a shot at winning this thing this weekend, do they? No, but I you do not use those guys on DraftKings either. The old guys are complete traps because even if they make the cut, they don't actually score. So on DraftKings, you want birdies, you want eagles, you want birdie streaks. Those guys just grind pars out and you have to hope that it's a difficult year. The Bernhard Langers, Fred Couples, Zach Johnson's at this point. Like Tiger is the only guy that I would consider who's above 45 right now. He's right around there. And the amateurs, I mean, no one knows anything about these amateurs anyway. Most of them are not prepared to take on Augusta National. So I think those guys are just easy cross-offs for me. And a lot okay. of people will go to them. Uh, and that's just dead money in the pot. Oh, okay. So just not smart betting at all when you resort to them things. Hey, any other pointers or tips or picks that you have for this weekend before we, we let you go for our viewers? Yeah, just uh, don't listen to anyone and just blindly tail them. It's good. Overall, whether you're playing fantasy, whether you're betting, you're the one making the bet. If you want to bet on Tiger, bet on Tiger. If this is supposed to be fun, you're not out there betting for a living. So you're out there for entertainment. If you go to the movies for three hours with your wife, bring two kids. Dang, what's that going to cost you? Like a hundred bucks now? Yep. Oh, guaranteed. Probably more than that with my three kids. <laughs> so you take, let's, okay, let's call it 150 bucks then for a three yep. hour movie plus concessions, all that fun stuff. Yep. So you take that $150 and you bet it on golf this week. Well, you get four days of entertainment out of it. It's way better bang for your buck. And listen, if you lose, you lose. If you win, you can win some serious big money. That's a lot of fun to do. So you can take your 150 bucks, bet four guys, bet five guys, whatever it might be. And then you get four days of fun out of it. That's the way that I would approach betting for anyone who's new to this. That's amazing, Pat. I appreciate this so much. Once again, guys, find Pat, Pat Mayo at the PME the Pat Mayo Show, you can find him. He's sponsored by DraftKings. He does a lot of guest appearances on so many shows, does his own shit. One of the smartest guys I know. Check out my episodes at Dag Swag. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow everything on both our sites. We appreciate the time, Pat. Really glad seeing you. Really good to see you again. Peace. It's Dag Swag. It's Dag Swag, it's Dag Swag.